the use state hook. We often think of it as React's simplest hook, and yet there are some complexities. There's two different ways to call the state setter. And depending on when you call that state setter, React can either batch your updates or not. Hi, I'm Jack Carrington, a principal full stack software engineer. And on this video, we're going to jump into the world of React batch updating, how to control it, when it happens, when it doesn't happen, the bugs and performance issues that it can cause. I'm excited. I hope you are too. Let's jump right into it. Okay, so here we have a simple app. It's based on create react app. And we've got the name of a user, which is currently undefined, their roles, which come back as an object where their roles have true and false values, and then a role list that we figure out from those roles that just have the keys where you have true roles. So let's go and hit the load user. And we can see that our test user is an editor. They, that's true. So they have the role list of editor. Okay, let's go take a look at the code. Okay, so right at the top, we have our two pieces of state that we're going to set. We've got the name, and then we've got the roles. And we then set that synchronously in this little onload user function that we have. So we then go and set both of those values. And then that triggers a use effect, which then looks at that list of roles and comes out with that role list. And that all happens when either name or roles changes. Okay, so the API folks have come back with their code. So now we can call the service and remove this test on load user and call their service, get back those values and set them in the React app. And then, hey, we're done for the day. Okay, so first let's go back and take a look at what the values are coming back from that service. And that's we mocked up in this user.json file. So what we need to do is first go get that data. To do that, I'm gonna bring in a get user data function. And I'm gonna hold this around for a little bit. I'm just going to copy and paste it. And we're going to create an asynchronous version of on load user. And what it's going to do is get back the data by awaiting that fetch. I'm going to console log out that data just to make sure that's the right stuff. But you know, in the meantime, I'm going to call set name with data.name and set roles with data.roles. All right, let's go take a look. And I'll hit refresh, I'm gonna hit load user and boom, the app blows up. So let's take a look. Are we getting back the right data? Well, it looks like we're getting back the right data, Jack, and the roles are the roles. So the fetch works. So let's try this again with the synchronous version, just to make sure that I haven't messed up anything by bringing in that fetch or that data. Let's see if it still works. And it does. So it's not that. So let's go take a look over in our use effect. And I'm going to console log in this use effect and say use effect. And I'm going to give the name and then the roles. And let's try this again. So I hit load user. And what we can see here is interesting, right? So we have one use effect that's the starting point. So that's giving us our undefined and undefined values for the name and the roles. And then we have one more use effect call for test user and then those roles. And this is kind of what we expect, right? We do two different state setters here, but React is smart enough to batch all that together and then only give us one component re-render. All right, let's go see now what happens when I do this from an asynchronous context. I'm gonna go and comment out the old one, bring in the new asynchronous one, and let's see what happens. I'm gonna hit refresh, hit load user, and boom. So let's go take a look again. And what we can see here, is pretty interesting. We have that same undefined undefined as we did have in the beginning with the other one. But now use effect is called and we can see that the name has been set, but the roles have not. And so the result is that we can see that we have a bug in this code. We're basically assuming that if the name is set, then the roles are set. Now, of course, we could just say, great, that's a bug. We can fix it by just saying, make sure that both are set and refresh and that works as fine. And the same sort of thing down here. We could use null coalescing, just make sure that the roles are either set and that works too, just to make sure that there's, you know, some basic default value here. So what is actually happening here? Because this is kind of weird. There's actually two different behaviors. We have a behavior that happens when you're in synchronous mode and a behavior that happens when you're in asynchronous mode. Well, that's actually the case. So in React 16 and 17, as it turns out, if you do a state setter, within a promise, 
they're actually done piecemeal. So set name gets run, this app gets re-rendered, this views effect gets rerun, and then the same thing for set roles. And every single one of them gets done piecemeal, as opposed to in synchronous mode when it's actually done in a batch. And that could really affect your performance. If you have multiple pieces of state coming in and your re-renders are fairly heavy, you could have multiple re-renders for multiple state sets, which is not always that good. So if you're saying to yourself, well, wait a second, hold on, onload user isn't actually a promise. Well, no, async has actually promoted this function to being a promise. It's just doing the work in JavaScript behind the scenes to go and set up the promise and resolve and reject it as you would. So is there a way in React 16 and 17 to get these two state setters to batch? Well, yes, there is actually. You can bring in unstable batch updates from the React DOM, that's a function. And then you call the function, and then within that, you do your setters. And get rid of this console log. Let's try this again. And so now instead of getting three use effects, we're now getting back to two use effects again. So we're getting the initial state set right here with the undefines, and then we're getting the correct batched update with a single update for the two values that we expect. Now I said React 16 and 17 because this behavior actually does change in React 18 where all updates are batched. So let's try this out. Let's promote ourselves to React 18 by going over to the package JSON. I'm going to change this to 18.0.0 and then go into the console, stop the server, do yarn. It's going to ask me which version of React I want. I'm going to say the most recent version of 18. Again, for the same for React DOM. And then I'm going to do yarn start. And we can see that we're getting an interesting warning here that we weren't getting before, but let's see that everything still works. It does, cool. But if we take out the unstable batched updates, does it still work? Let's give it a try. So we'll take out the import, we'll take out the function call. Let's try this over, hit load user, and no, we have exactly the same problem as we had before. We're getting three use effects as opposed to two, and so that's a problem. So let's go over to our index.js and we can see that what we need to do is follow the guidelines here when it comes to React DOM render. And what we need to do is create a root and we'll say React DOM create root with that element by ID of root. And then we'll call root.render with our app. Let's see how we go. Load user and we get batching updates. So awesome. Of course, there are some other changes that come with React 18. Your app might not be compatible with it, but at least you know now one of the benefits of React 18 is this inherently batched behavior of set states between all the set states, regardless of when you call it. Okay, now I would be remiss if we didn't go back here and take a look at some other ways to fix this. So one way to fix this for sure would be to have a single piece of state. For example, you could say name and roles and call this info. And what other changes would we need to make? And then we've got an update inside here, roles and roles. And then down here, do a set info with the data coming back because it's in the same shape as our object. And then down here, do info.name and info.roles. Great, let's hit load user. Good, perfect, so everything's working now. And we're getting an atomic update bill because we only have a single piece of state. And then the last fix up I would do is actually use use memo as opposed to use effect because what we're doing is deriving data here. So we really need to do is say that we have a role list, which is a use memo where we take the object.keys, do what we did before, and we change based on info.roles. That's our dependency array. And now we can get rid of all this. And now role list updates whenever info.roles changes automatically, well, really because of the dependency array. So let's hit refresh again, hit load user, and now it works fine. So this is fairly efficient. When you're returning an array or an object, it really is good to use use memo because that could be an arbitrarily long piece of work to do. 
All right, well, I hope you now know more about batched updating, how it works in React 16, how it works in React 17, how it's gonna work in React 18, how you can get your state setting to batch, when it batches, when it doesn't batch and all that stuff. Of course, if you like this video, be sure to hit that like button. If you really like the video, hit the subscribe button, click on that bell, and you'll be notified the next time a new blue collar coder comes out.